Good day folks, today we are going to be taking a look at the new smartphone gimbal by Zihoon. Zoon, Zihoon, not exactly sure how it's pronounced. But anyways, as you can see, it is a smartphone gimbal. It's uh, been out for about a month now, a little over a month, and you can see they've really stepped up their game. Um, a lot of new features, uh, completely different form factor compared to their older models. But not only for smartphones, it unofficially supports the use of a GoPro without any kind of adapter. And I'll show you later on in the video how to uh, mount your GoPro into it. So in this video, we're going to kind of go over some of the new features. I'm going to go over the menus and what all the buttons do. But first, let's do a quick unboxing. And like a lot of manufacturers are doing, they're kind of including these kind of like uh, styrofoamy kind of cases. So there it is there. So inside the box here we get a tripod. We get a USB-C cable and then we have the gimbal unit here. So first impression um, holding it, it uh, it's quite large actually. But not too heavy. It's not much different than a lot of the other gimbals on the market. Uh, the handle is a little different. Handle would have been nice to be a little bit more aeronomical. Um, that just kind of does feel a little awkward, uh, but not too, too bad. So this is the Smooth 4, and it is replacing the Smooth Q. This is their older version. There is some size difference. It's hard to tell maybe in the video here, but uh, the new Smooth 4 is a little bit bigger, uh, not by much. Um, it's maybe three inches taller, but it is so much more advanced and has many new features and we'll kind of go over all of them. But first I want to talk about some initial thoughts. Uh, when you purchase it, it comes with a tripod. Uh, it's just a plastic tripod, but it seems sturdy enough. I've actually had the gimbal now for about three weeks. I didn't want to rush out the review because I wanted uh, a good amount of time to use it and play with it before I made any kind of judgment or uh, thoughts. Um, but yeah, so it's nice that it does come with the little tripod and that just screws into the bottom and it's great if you are going to be doing any kind of uh, time lapses or different things like that. It also comes now equipped with USB-C. I am so happy that the industry is finally starting to catch up and uh, this is probably the first gimbal on the market that I know of that is now USB-C compatible. So that's really good. And I've ranted about this in many of my videos. I long for the day when everything is USB-C. You can have one USB-C cable in your backpack and you can charge all your devices. Another really nice feature is this locking mechanism. Um, gimbals tend to flop around quite a bit, especially if, you know, if you're out filming, doing some sightseeing and you turn it off, this thing is always flopping around. You know, if you own a gimbal, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, but they've included a really nice feature that it locks in even when you have your smartphone mounted and it will put the unit into standby mode. Now, one thing I'm gonna point out and in some of the other reviews, you might have uh, seen it as well. The handle is not really well designed. Um, it's actually more comfortable holding it sideways than it is straight on like you're supposed to hold it. You know, it works. But uh, I think they could have done a little bit better job with the handle, uh, make it a little bit more aeronomical. It does feel a little awkward to hold, but uh, not too bad. And it's just a small minor issue. So let's get a phone mounted in here and uh, we'll take a look at some of the buttons, how they work and the menu system. So mounting your smartphone is pretty straightforward. This is just a spring mechanism and the phone just slides in there like so. But what you do notice right away is that it's not balanced. Uh, the reason they do that is that uh, it's capable of holding various sizes of phones. So what they've done here is they've got a little uh, screw or dial there. And if you loosen it, you can slide this whole arm over and you can see now the phone will be balanced in there. Pretty close anyways. So then we're going to tighten that back up. To power it on, we've got a power button there at the bottom. And we're just going to power it on. Just like so. Now I'm not gonna go over every menu item because there is a ton in here. There's a lot of uh, videos on YouTube already going over the menu system. So I'm just gonna cover the most common ones and the ones that I find really interesting. So uh, to start things off, we need to download the Zune Play app and you can download it from the App Store. I've already gone ahead and downloaded it. So we're just gonna launch it here. It's gonna have a little bit of a tour. 
and then we hit go. Now at this point, you wanna make sure your Bluetooth is enabled on your phone. Mine already is. So we're now gonna hit uh, connect the device. We're gonna confirm it. And in a minute here, it'll ask us if we want to allow access to our microphone and camera. So there's the microphone and there's the camera. And there we go. It looks like there's a lot of buttons and there is, but it's actually laid out very easily. And once you get accustomed to what they are, it's actually very simple and very, very convenient. Um, you'll notice there's a dial over here, which we'll talk about in a minute. Uh, there is a dial here in the middle, but it's also a button. You've got a down button, up button, left, right button, sorry, and left button. So we'll start over here on the left hand side. This is your menu button. And if we press it, it brings up our menu and all the different uh, things we can do. Settings for the camera, for the flash, timer, uh, HDR. And you can use this dial here in the middle to scroll between all of them. So when you pick a menu item that you want, you can hit the lightning bolt that will select it. For example, there's a camera and it uh, brings up some of the different uh, shooting modes. And again, to select that item, we hit the lightning bolt and that's been selected. At any time, you can also use the menu button as a back arrow to get you out of the menu system. The next button over here is the display button. And as you can see, when I click it, it just turns off all the settings there. If you don't want that in your view, if you find it distracting, you can toggle it on and off just like so. The next button down here has a picture of a camera and that's how you take a photograph. And the one over here is the record button. So there's not one dedicated uh, button for both recording and for photos. Um, you know, when you have to switch back and forth between modes, you can just automatically uh, take a picture or start recording video. This button over here changes the mode for the focus wheel. So I'm just gonna stick a gimbal in behind here so I can show you uh, the zoom in that with the focus wheel. So by default, when you turn this dial, it changes the focus, as you can see. Now that's really handy because if you uh, are doing any kind of very s cinematic filmmaking and you want to do some cool focusing, you know, like, um, you know, you have something close up but you want to focus in behind, uh, that's really nice that they include that and it's very simple. And, uh, you know, it's they've kind of geared this gimbal towards filmmakers, people who want to use their phone to make uh, nice little films. And uh, they got all the tools on here definitely that you need. So that's the focus wheel. Now, if we hit this button, you'll see it illuminates. And now it becomes a zoom. And it's very smooth, I find. Maybe not as smooth as a DSLR, but, uh, you know, for your iPhone... Definitely you can uh, do some cool effects with that. So now for this wheel here, you'll see if we hold the middle button down, it'll be hard to tell, but it actually turns the flash on. So that's kind of nice. You can actually turn your camera flash, the little flash that's built into the camera on and off just by holding down that button there. Now, if you click at the top of the dial, it's a quick shortcut to your resolution at the top there. You can see you can switch through all the uh, resolutions that the phone supports. The side button, when you press it, allows you to control the brightness. It adjusts the EV compensation. So if uh, you know you need something a little bit brighter, you can do that very easily. The bottom of the button brings up your media. I haven't recorded any media on this specific phone, but uh, that's how you would access your media. Because when you record stuff, take photos, videos, it's not saved directly to your camera roll. It's saved in its own little library first, and from there you have to transfer it to your camera roll after. Now lastly, the button to the left over here switches it to selfie mode. Now just below all these buttons is the uh, lock and follow buttons and this is how you change the modes. So I'm gonna just show you here quickly. So right now it's on pan and follow. That means the horizon's always gonna stay level, but you can pan to the side if you lock it by sliding it down. The horizon will always stay level and the camera pan will always be facing forward. It won't pan from side to side. Now on the back here, we kind of have a trigger style button. The top button basically enables a setting called Phone Go. And what that does is, if I can demonstrate it here, it makes the motors, it puts them into a more high responsive mode. So if you're filming something with a lot of action, uh, gimbals tend to be slow as you're panning around. But when I hold the button and you can see that the phone is still staying smooth, but it uh, turns a lot more responsively. Now the bottom button there, puts it in all follow so that way the camera can tilt up and down depending on how you hold it on the side here we have our USB-C port 
and uh, that's how we charge it and update the firmware. So let's take a closer look at the menu and we'll see some of the features that uh, Zune has incorporated into it. It's actually, they've got some really interesting uh, things you can do with it. Over here, they have some filters you can see there and they've got all different filters you can add to uh, change the effect. And as you can see, it uh, gives you a real time preview. And then if we go to camera mode here, you're going to see that they have all these different uh, modes for shooting. They have a 180 degree panel and it's really nice that the camera moves all by itself and uh, sets it all up for you. The next is a 3x3 panel and basically it does three uh, photos high, three photos long and uh, stitches it all together for you. Does all the movements all by itself. Over here we have long exposure so you can do some long exposure photography. You know at night if you want to get light trails and different things like that, that's where you would go for that. Slow motion, pretty self-explanatory. It's if you want to film at a high frame rate to get slow motion. They have a time-lapse feature. Uh, the next is motion time-lapse. Uh, that allows you to set different waypoints and have the gimbal move to add some nice motion to your time-lapse. And this is the vertical effect. It takes a little bit of practice to get to use it properly. I've been playing around with it a bit and still haven't mastered it myself. I'll throw an example up here just so you can get a rough idea of what it does. So yeah, that's basically the menu system and the controls on the gimbal itself. So let's head out and I'll show you some examples, uh, just some footage that I shot with it. Another nice thing you can do with this gimbal is mount a GoPro directly in it without the use of any kind of adapters. For example, in some smartphone gimbals, you would have to use an adapter like this. You would mount the GoPro in it, and that would kind of allow you to mount it in there kind of like a phone. Now, uh, an adapter like this will definitely work in the Smooth 4, but uh, you really don't need it. And I'll just show you here how you can mount your GoPro in it without having to use an adapter, which, you know, less gear to carry around, the better, right? So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the mount in the portrait mode if you were going to be mounting a phone. So we're just gonna undo the dial there and then we're gonna spin it right around and uh, tighten it right up. So now we're gonna just mount the GoPro right in here. And a little tip here, what you'll notice is that you can pull from this side and you can pull from that side. But to help with balance issues, when you mount the GoPro in here, pull it from this side. You want this uh, spring mechanism all the way in if possible. So basically, we're just going to put the GoPro in. Just kind of hold that side with your finger and slide it in. So as you can see, it's now mounted in there and only this spring uh, side is out. If you had a phone mounted in there, most likely this arm is pulled all the way out. But what we're going to want to do is push it all the way in. Because the GoPro is going to balance a little differently, so then we'll just tighten up that knob. Now generally the GoPro is balanced not too bad in there. It's not perfect, but it does work. Now the other thing is you will need to hold the handle backwards, which is okay because none of these controls are going to work for the GoPro anyways. Here is some footage shot on the GoPro Hero 6 Black mounted in the Smooth 4.
That is the Smooth 4 by Zaihun. Um, a nice multi-purpose stabilizer uh, if you want to use it with a smartphone or your GoPro. Now ideally if you're just going to be mainly shooting with a GoPro, uh, you're best to get one designed specifically for a GoPro. But if you're a person who likes to film with your phone and your GoPro, uh, this might be a better option for you because you can do both. You only have to have one gimbal that you need to carry around. It's nice that they have all these buttons on here and all these features, uh, but they're not always necessary. Like if you just want to grab a quick shot, Quite often, myself, I'll just mount the phone and just use the stock app that comes with the iPhone, grab some footage, and uh, shut it off. Uh, all the extra accessories and features are nice, uh, but they're not always needed. Well, anyways, folks, I will include a link down below where you can go and check out the Smooth 4 a little bit more. I want to thank you for watching my video. If you have any questions about the Smooth 4, hit me up down in the comments. I will try and answer them the best I can. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. And we'll see you in the next one.